Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we are tracking a tropical wave in the middle of the main development region for possible development and see where it potentially could go and how strong it could get. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibits.com for Friday, July 26, 2024. The black arrow is pointing towards Disturbance 1, highlighted by the National Hurricane Center for a chance for possible development over the next seven days. We also have three other tropical waves that we are monitoring. Two of them behind our disturbance will potentially merge with our disturbance and keep its energy and moisture going before potentially developing closer towards the Caribbean or the United States. Here's the vorticity, the signature, the spinner energy in the atmosphere of the tropical waves that we're monitoring, highlighted by our red boxes. The one in the middle is Disturbance 1. So you can see we have multiple tropical waves out here that we're monitoring the main development region. The one on the left is Disturbance 1, then we have two behind it, and then another one over Africa as well. And as we discussed in a previous video, we have this uh, a large amount of rising air over Africa that's going to be coming about. As you can see here on our map here with the dark greens on the left, combined with the convectively coupled Kelvin wave, which is our diagonal box, by the time we get to next week, that will be making what's a more favorable environment. And to better visualize it, you can see here, the left arrow is our convectively coupled Kelvin wave coming through. The right arrow is pointing towards the dark green of our rising motion over Africa, which is going to pump out those tropical waves that we just saw on our latest satellite image. Those are just going to keep coming one after another, stronger after uh, one becoming stronger after that. So here's the disturbance one that we're monitoring right now. Nothing crazy, uh, lackluster convection with it associated right now. It's got a 0% chance of developing over the next two days but a 20% chance of developing over the next seven days, according to the National Hurricane Center, as it's going to be very slow moving and actually get uh, absorbed by our two tropical waves behind it, which will help continue bringing about its spin and energy and moisture content to fight off the Saharan air layer that it's us being surrounded by right now. So let's look at a comparison of the European NGFS models and see how this could go over the next seven days. So the black arrow is our disturbance one. The red arrow is one of our tropical waves that we're monitoring right now. You can see the two energies, the spin and vorticity associated with both. We have a developing upper level ridge over both of these. That is conducive for tropical development, which means it decreases the amount of wind shear in the region and fight allows that dry air to not get inundated into these tropical waves. So the Saharan air layer will continue moving towards the Caribbean and these tropical waves will slowly move northward out of the tropics around our Bermuda Azores high towards the Caribbean and actually merge with each other because they're just very slow moving at the moment. And they're slow moving because we have weak trade winds out here. So by the time we get to two days from now on Sunday the 28th, the second of our tropical waves will be in the middle here in red. Disturbance 1 will have merged with one of them. As you can see, two little vorticity maxes associated with it on the European model there in black. And we have another tropical wave coming off in purple off the coast of Africa on both models here. I also have highlighted in red another vorticity max off the east coast of the United States. That is unlikely to the becoming anything tropical in nature. It has a, maybe a small chance of becoming subtropical, but as you can see with the moisture content, it's got frontal boundaries associated with it, so it's unlikely to be anything becoming any named storm unless it can detach itself from those frontal boundaries. So by the time we get to Wednesday, July 31st, which is five days from now, our Disturbance 1 will be knocking on the door on the northern uh, islands of the Caribbean. 
as you can see here, our purple tropical wave will have moved into the middle of the main development region. And then another tropical wave behind that in pink will be coming off the coast of Africa. Now, as I've said in previous videos before, even if we don't see development of this tropical wave in black uh, to become anything tropical in nature, it could be the springboard that plows through the Saharan air layer, making it more conducive for the two tropical waves or three tropical waves or four tropical waves behind it to eventually be the one that develops. We've seen this before on the European model and we're seeing it today. The past couple of days, past three days, European model was very aggressive with developing this tropical wave that we're monitoring in black today. Today, as you can see, it's coming, it's come back down to reality. It's more in line with the GFS model where we're not seeing anything to develop. And we'll see that as we go into day seven in a minute. Um, but doesn't mean we're not going to see development because we're seeing the environment become more conducive for development. We see the wind shear decreasing. We see the moisture content becoming more robust and seeing the dry air starting to get eroded away, especially because of our front tropical wave in black, Disturbance 1. So as this, as these waves come off the coast of Africa, it's just going to moisten the atmosphere more. And with this convectively coupling coven wave coming through, it's just going to make it even more favorable as for a brief period of time, because it's a very small uh, wave that comes through to make it favorable in the Atlantic. So then by the time we get to day seven, you can see here, we'll have both trop in black on both the European and GFS. The, the wave will be moving through Hispaniola or Cuba, depending on the speed uh, and going around our Bermuda Azores high. And we also still see our two other tropical waves in pink and purple in the main development region. But as you can see, those wind barbs on here are very, they're five, 10 knots. Nothing's moving very fast at the moment. So the trades are very slow. The Bermuda Azores are very high. So we're going to see very slow movement of these waves over the next seven to 10 days. Now, the European Ensemble model is still very bullish. As you can see, in the next seven days, we have a lot of support for it. Uh, of Disturbance 1 moving through the Caribbean for possible development. Nothing crazy strong, as you don't see any yellows, oranges, or reds, or pinks. But we do see some light blues, dark blues. That would indicate at least a tropical storm potentially forming. And then behind it, we have our pink uh, hexagon box here for our one of our other tropical waves that we're monitoring coming off the coast of Africa in about seven days or so. So this one is showing up on both the European and GFS models. And that's why I'm indicating it might not be this disturbance one, but potentially two or three tropical waves behind it after it's eroded away the Saharan air layer, that's the wave we might have to watch. So we'll keep an eye on both right now. The Serpents 1 is on the radar of the National Hurricane Center, but I'm not truly convinced of it yet, but it could be seeding the, the Atlantic for the waves behind it. As you can see, the Climate Prediction Center is giving the next two weeks after the next seven days, so the next three weeks really, we have a 20% chance of seeing development for the next three weeks in the Atlantic based on the National Hurricane Center and the Climate Prediction Center. So we'll keep an eye on Disturbance 1 as it moves westward towards the Caribbean Islands, as well as the main development region as our other tropical waves come off the coast of Africa. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you do and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.